Hello again. Well, we're moving on our topic with attachment, and this is an area where there's one person that you can't get through without talking about, and it's John Bowlby. He's a British psychoanalyst, and he has led the thinking on attachment since the late 1960s. He's extremely well cited and he has been the direct teacher of some other people who are equally influential in the field, for example, Mary Ainsworth of The Strange Situation. So a key figure uh, in the area of developmental psychology and attachment theory in particular. Well, his big idea is a monotropic theory of attachment. And the focus of this is that an individual infant will form a deep connection, a solid attachment with one other person, one primary caregiver. Obviously other attachments will grow from there, but the monotropic theory says that there's one person that things are focused in on. Now, originally, Bowlby's ideas coming from psychoanalysts is gonna be influenced by Freud. But what he also says is that his theory is very much an ethological theory, meaning that the research that he is basing his theory off of is research on animals, research on birds, on mammals. He did a lot of focus on looking at what have people learned from monkey studies. So it's not necessarily looking at studies based on humans directly, but he's extrapolating from that. We can, of course, evaluate whether that's good or bad, whether the studies that he was looking at have external validity to be able to be applied to humans. But out and out, he straight away said this is what his theory is doing and it is using animals to start with. As the theory develops and as other research develops, he does bring in a lot more human research into his thinking. For example, later research brings into question some of his original ideas that infants de develop certain useful behaviours. He says there are five key attachment behaviours, these being sucking, cuddling, looking, smiling and crying. And he argues that these developed in the environment of evolutionary adaptation and that infants who survived were those who demonstrated these behaviours and those who didn't were likely to have, have suffered uh, death at, at the hands of a predator, for example. Well, Bowlby's theory was somewhat brought into question by Hay in 1977, who found that a baby was just as likely around the age of nine to 12 months to follow an unfamiliar lady across the room as they were to follow their own mother across the room. So where does this leave the theory for Bowlby? If, if it's a monotropic theory, there's one person, one attachment, but it's focused on the behaviors, well, has Hay just blown this theory apart? Well. Bobby developed the thinking off the back of new research that was coming in. And he moved the discussion along to not being so individual behavior focused, but much more the idea that an infant develops an ability to use the attachment figure as a secure base from which to go out and explore the world. And this is very familiar territory. If you know the work of Mary Ainsworth and the strange situation, this is exactly what she's testing. Securely attached infants are able to use their primary attachment figure as a base from which they then go out and freely explore. Now throughout his thinking at each stage, Bowie maintains this monotropic idea, but he is very, very keen to stress throughout his thinking that this doesn't necessarily mean that the primary attachment figure has to be the infant's biological mother. And this is really important uh, when we think about uh, different family units and structures, adoption, foster care, what about a single father, what about people being brought up by a grandparent, all of these issues come into force here. And so he's very keen to stress throughout his research Monotropic does not necessarily mean that the infant can only create that attachment with their biological mother, but they do have this innate, evolutionarily developed tendency to seek out one strong attachment figure, which will then be the base of further attachments down the line. Check out our video on Schaffer and Emerson's four stages of attachment, because that's gonna give you some additional uh, thoughts to include in your discussions, which is gonna add extra depth uh, to your knowledge of this area, which you'll be able to show off uh, in the exam. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more coming to help you not only pass but excel in your A-level exams coming up. Uh, so lots more. Subscribe to Psychology Unlocked. Thanks for watching.